Okay, let's get back to this week's releases. Um, we're going to talk about Red Tails, mm. I believe. Who's kicking us off on this? I think I'll start, yeah, shall sure. I? Go yes. Go um, Red it, Tails. Go. I mean, George Lucas has made a, an obscene amount of money from making <laughs> these hideous Star Wars prequels, but he has done something <laughs> useful with it. He spent £58 million making this film, Red Tails, what? which is about the 332nd fighter group of the US Army Corps, also known as the Tuskegee Airmen. Now, what makes these people unique is that they were all, as they would have said in those days, Negroes or coloured men who initially were thought not to have the intelligence or the aptitude to become pilots. So this was an experiment. And what happened, of course, was that they, they passed uh, with flying colours, no pun intended, and then they were given kind of uh, backroom job you know, kind of looking after, you know, picking up waifs and strays here, a train that had gone AWOL somewhere. Uh, they had rickety old planes and they weren't really given a proper job. Eventually, through the kind of uh, pressure that was put by some of their co commanding officers, they were finally given P-51 Mustangs, which were the up-to-date planes, and they did get in there and kick some butt. And what they've tried to do here is to create an old-fashioned World War II film that is also a celebration of the struggle that these men had, first of all, to be taken seriously, and secondly, to have what they achieved recognised by anybody outside the sort of immediate circle. Um, David Oyelowo, who was in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, is the kind of hero here. But it's an ensemble piece, really. It's all about the relationships between them. Um, on one level, it's a story that needs telling. It doesn't need telling like this. OK. <laughs> Shall we have a little clip? Let's have a little listen. And you all thought what? You'd sign up, you get shiny boots, a uniform, and that'd be the end of a hundred years of bigotry. You're coloured men in the white man's army. It's a miracle you're flying fighters in Italy and not mopping latrines in Milwaukee. You want it straight? Yes. The old man stateside fighting the good fight. And when he comes through for us, we better be damn sure ready to do the same for him. Any of you feel otherwise, any of you want to wash yourselves out, well, Negro, please do so. I'll have you on the next thing smoking back home to make room for the men who want to stand and fight. Get your head up, son. You fighter pilots. Barney Ross on Facebook says, I saw this when I was last in the States. And be honest, all of us, George Lucas really needs to stop making films. It's awful bad acting, a bad script, bad directing, uh, good CGI on the plus side. Please stop, George. We can't take it anymore. And Anthony Farrell on Facebook says, uh, this is a train wreck of a film. It's a tra There's a train wreck in the opening scene, which is <laughs> ironic because the rest of the film is the same. $100 million budget. It looks like it's made for telly. The CGI is totally out of place. Their characters are flat. The script and dialogue is absolutely terrible. How are we going to get people to act this badly in a film with such a huge budget? It's beyond me. George Lucas didn't direct the film, but it has his grubby fingerprints all over it. Movie making by numbers and an insult to the real people who the movie's based on. Avoid. Um, yeah. oh. Boyd. Yeah, I agree. It, it's, I mean, the first scene is this CGI first. We, that, that email saying the CGI is good. I actually thought the CGI is just so obviously not real. All of that stuff with all these hundreds of planes in the air, all of the airborne stuff... Which, which is better, at least, than the ground. The stuff based on the ground which is just banal and boring. But the end stuff is supposed to be exciting action segments. It's just so obviously CGI. It ruins the whole thing for me. And I, I, the same thing for Prometheus. Like Prometheus, I was going to mention this before. You know, the co comparison between Alien with its mechanical and model of work and effects to Prometheus with its pure CGI really annoys me. And I think it's much more effective um, and believable films in the old days. I'm sounding like an old man. I am an old man. And this, for me, Not sums up... Old. Because old films which dealt with, you know, airborne, uh, airborne warfare which didn't have CGI, for me, much more effective and believable than this one, which is totally reliant on CGI and, and just ends up being totally unbelievable. And it, it is a banal, tedious film. It's quite frustrating. I, I got quite cross with Cuba Gooding Jr. is given oh, a yeah. pipe and every scene that he's in, there he is sort of doing some kind of Popeye being yeah. Crosby style. Like, in lieu gonna, of the character. If you're going to have yeah. a pipe, he's obviously got no character no. to play. It's like, give me a pipe. He could at least smoke it. Absolutely. I think I saw smoke coming out of it once, yeah. the only yeah. time. Well, George Lucas doesn't like to have messy smoke in <laughs> there was actually a woman in the cinema and I was watching it, she was asleep for oh, the whole film. Um, Nigel. I've got nothing more to say about that film, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was absolute catastrophe on every level. <laughs> Let's give it a grade then. D minus. Oh. Yeah, D minus, absolutely. D minus. Let's move on quickly.